and those chemicals are represent a danger. So the body has a cleanup crew for those chemicals. And usually it's not a problem. If a cell dies once in a while, you got a cleanup crew and it will clean up those chemicals. But when cells are chronically dying because we're not eating correctly, because we're missing our mighty 90 essential nutrients, because we're not breathing correctly, because we got too much cortisol, because we have too much inflammatory chemicals, because we don't have enough melatonin for a million reasons. When cells die ex at an extreme amount, you got lots of these enzymes and lots of these chemicals and lots of this debris floating around. The cleanup crew can't do its work. You can see some of this debris in dark spots on the skin. We've talked about that before. It's called lipofusion. The body will fig figure and not know what to do with all of this garbage. It can't clean it up. It can't process it because there's too much of it. So it'll stick it in places. It'll stick it in your heart. It'll stick it in your kidneys. It'll stick it in your skin. And you get lipo in your brain. You get lipofusion, these dark spots all over the body, inside and outside. Even worse, or, or as bad, eventually these nasty toxic enzymes and chemicals, which are only nasty and toxic because they're outside of the cell. Inside the cell, they're perfectly functional. When they're outside the cell, they can contact your nerves, your electrical wiring. We have a word for this. When those cell contents can uh, touch the electrical wiring, the enzymes and the chemistry, you know what we call that? We call that pain. <laughs> That's what pain is. Neuropathies. Chronic pain is caused by cells busting open, cells busting open and releasing their contents, releasing their contents into the tissue and into the circulatory system, into the lymph. And this can happen. It doesn't have to happen when cells just die chemically because they're not getting nourished or they're starving or they uh, they're, uh, don't have enough oxygen. This can happen just if you have pressure, just trauma can do it. If you break your arm or break your leg or if you have a burn, that can do it too. What you're experiencing, the pain you're experiencing from a technical standpoint is the contents of the cells that are being destroyed, releasing their contents. The cells are destroyed, releasing their contents, activating or touching the electrical wiring. That's basically what pain is. And this can occur for a lot of reasons. As I say, it could be mechanical. You could break your leg. It could be, uh, it could be um, a burn. Or it can be starvation, suffocation, and toxification, and distorted cell membranes. Rancidity of a cell, as we said. Uh, distorted, broken down cell membranes can do it. Broken, and here's another thing. Broken down cells and cell debris can initiate more debris and more cell destruction. You get this vicious downward cycle. So you get pain, you get loss of functionality of tissues and organs, you get more cell death, you get this vicious cycle as more and more cells are dumping out their contents. This is degenerative disease, folks, in a nutshell. And it starts off with a broken down cell. Classic example of this kind of pain is neuropathy. And I probably get 10 letters a day on neuropathy. Not surprisingly, if you have a, if you've been diagnosed with this condition, neuropathy, which just means nerve pain, now you know what causes it. Now you understand the mechanism of neuropathy. Nobody really knows. When I get these letters from folks, people don't understand what neuropathy really is, and that's where we run into problems. If we don't understand the mechanisms of how we're breaking down, then we just do whatever the doctor tells us, and that doesn't work out so well. Okay, I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We do have lines open for you. We'll take a break and come back with your phone calls and more good health information right after this. Okay, you... We are back on the bright side on Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. Hang tight if you're on hold. We'll get to you in just a second. We're talking melatonin and, and uh, pain, neuropathy. In 600 feet, oh, turn left dude. on 20th Street. How do you like that? Um, anyway, melatonin protects the outside part of a cell. When the outside part of a cell breaks down, the contents of a cell can explode, leak into the circulatory system and into tissues. This is what we call pain. If it happens randomly, so-called randomly, supposedly randomly, in other words, it's not associated with trauma or not associated with a burn, you can rest assured your cells are breaking down inside. This is why diabetes and neuropathy go hand in hand. And this is why melatonin can help you with, uh, can help you with your neuropathies. Melatonin can help you with your nerve pains. Melatonin can help you with your nerve cells. From the journal Cell, published September 10th, melatonin explains the mystery of seasonal multiple sclerosis flare-ups. 
Seasonal flare-ups in patients with multiple sclerosis are caused by, get this, plummeting levels of melatonin in the spring and summer, according to research published September 10th in Cell. The study reveals that relapses in patients with multiple sclerosis are much less frequent in the fall and winter when levels of the so-called darkness hormone are at their highest. Did your doctor tell you that? I'm not sitting here saying that multiple sclerosis can be cured with melatonin, but I'm just saying there's all of these ways, there's all of these strategies that we can use ourselves to control our disease process without medical intervention. 844-236-6010 844-236-6010 is our number. Tomorrow we'll talk about melatonin and diabetes. And uh, we'll continue talking about neuropathies, melatonin and neuropathies. As we uh, continue discussing fats, hormones, fatty hormones, and the skin. 844-236-6010 is our number. Glenn, what's going on? Glenn in PA. Glenn, you are a PA. You're a PA or you're an RN. Right, right, exactly. Right. That's cool. Me. And where do you work, Glenn? I do private duty home care for special needs kids, okay. CP patients, and brain disorders, that sort of thing. Oh, very cool. Good deal. You work for an agency, yeah. or you got your own gig, or what's the deal? No, uh, agency, yeah. Very no, nice. I don't what's, like doing the 1099 thing. What do you think of the nursing profession? What's it like these days? Would you, would you oh, recommend it? I still recommend it. Um, it. You know, as with everything, I mean, it's harder. You know, everything's... Um, I mean, I... I sort of went into private duty care because of the, um, you know, patient nurse ratios going up so much, staffing levels, uh-huh. and you know, you always, uh, the challenging. <laughs> you can always get a job, in other words. Well, yeah, and you, you know, and you can diversify. You can professionalize as much as you want. You can nice. specialize. You get a master's. You get a PhD. You can nice. you can certify in a given field. I mean, if you can't. You know, if you can't find a uh, niche in nursing, then boy, you're just awfully picky. <laughs> and what do nurses? What do nurses start off at? Like when they graduate, like how much an hour? Thirty bucks an hour? Fifty uh, bucks an hour? Oh no, not necessarily these days. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it, well, it depends. It depends on your demography, you know, zip code and stuff like just that. Just roughly, so I, I can you make a good living? I, I ballpark mid twenties per hour, let's say. Okay, got it. And is it gratifying or is it taxing or is it both? Oh, oh, both, of course. And, both. you know, like, you, you've got to be, you've got to be a good time manager, you know, and, and uh, you know, if, whether you're working, like, a med search floor in a hospital or, um, you know, the different levels or if you're working in residential care, you know, or, or nursing home type stuff, um, one's, one's higher acuity, lower patient load, one's lower acuity, higher patient load. So, uh, and either way, you've got to be uh, fit, you know, um, quick on your feet and, and mm. making, making good use of your time. I say most. I do notice most nurses tend to be younger. RNs, that is, tend to be younger. Oh yeah. Than old. yeah it's interesting. It's, I could see it being a physically demanding job. So what's going on? How can we help you, buddy? Um, well, uh, okay. Oh, I was surprised that you didn't mention that um, sclerosis means hardening. I don't know, like scleroderma right. would be hardening skin. Right. And, hardening uh, tissue. And, um, yeah. Yeah, and myelin sheaths are made of Schwann cells. I'm surprised you didn't get done that to the cellular level. Well, you, uh, that's between me and you, buddy. This is we're talking. We're not talking medical. I'm not talking to doctors. You know, I'm not talking to, uh, I know, I know, I know. I actually do have very intelligent listeners, but you don't have to be. You know, right. a lot of this stuff is just common sense. It's not. Isn't it common sense, Glenn? You know, a lot of this. I don't, is big, I don't believe in common sense. I don't you don't believe. believe in common sense. Sense. You don't believe in common no. sense? Isn't the no, inflammatory pro the idea that cells break down, release their contents, hit the nerves, the nerves, and that's how you feel pain? Isn't that isn't this logic? Forget common well, sense. Isn't it logical? Logic, yes, yeah, logic. Yes. Yeah. See, see, one man's common sense is enough. like people say, oh, this is com- this common sense when it's really somewhat technical. You know, one man's common sense is another man's. Okay, then logical. You know, yeah, then logical. Yeah, 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 absolutely, say. absolutely. You know, I think God designed everything pretty logically and all that. Right. But um, so I wanted to bounce back to our um, discussion last week about uh, chronic inflammation, something you said about eating. And I was thinking about eating and uh, anti-inflammatory diets and stuff. And you alluded just to the concept where I was pretty sure what you were saying is that, in a sense, eating and digestion are themselves somewhat inflammatory processes. Absolutely, 100%. Right. And, and it's logical. Okay. And it's logical, though, Glenn. I'm not just asserting right, that. Right, right. Do, you see, do you see the logic? The invader is getting into the system, so the system wakes right. up. That's what the that's what the immune system is supposed so, to do. So my point is, give it, it, it. Okay, so does this? Okay, this would seem to me to point to the idea that it's it would be best then 
to eat a meal and then stop eating and allow your body to process that meal and then allow Absolutely. your body to go into sort of a, a non-inflammatory Absolutely. phase for a number of hours and then eat again as Abs needed. Absolutely. But, yeah. And the less you do so it, the better off you are. Right, and then, right, and so this militates against constant nibbling. Because That's the stupidest always, thing you ever, I can always tell when somebody doesn't know what they're talking about, or they're repeating something, or they're just ignorant, a medical professional, and there's a lot of them, as you know, ignorant medical professionals, ignorant alternative medical professionals, when they say certain things, one of those things is eat all day long. I know right away they don't like understand chemistry. Idea. What? Right. <laughs> <That's a good> <laughs> <idea>. <laughs> Obviously, yeah, you, yeah. obviously, from a, remember logic here, Glenn. If you know you have an inflammatory response that's mounted to anything, which makes sense, the less you have that inflammatory response, the better off you're going to be. The body can handle a certain amount of inflammation, though. And it, you have to eat. So this is why we have an immune system. The problem is when it's bombarded. And then in conjunction with nutritional deficiencies and our crappy lifestyle, this is where it begins, a disease process. And this is why fasting always benefits health conditions. All you got to do is Google multiple sclerosis and fasting. WebMD talks about it. You know? Right. This is why fasting and caloric restriction, by the way, caloric restriction, res restricting your calories, is the single most powerful anti-aging strategy there is. Why? Because the, you, you're not attacking the body chronically. And, and by the way, Glenn, when it comes to eating, there's two types of eating, or there's two types of food. There are uh, the macro, there's two types of food components, I should say. There's the macro components, which are the proteins and the fats and the carbohydrates. They represent calories the and energy. Then there's the micronutrients, and we need to make that distinction because we get plenty of calories. The calories are the enemy. The micronutrients, they're not the enemy. It's the calories that are the enemy. You understand? The uh -huh. micronutrients, right. they represent ways that the body uses the macronutrients, the proteins, the fats, and the carbs. It's the caloric intake and the fats and the, and the proteins that, ma that stimulate the immune response, that activate the immune response. This is why supplementation can be so helpful because with supplements, you get the micronutrients without having to deal with as much burden from the macronutrients. Now, whole foods, right. what distinguishes a whole food from a junk food is a a whole food has the perfect balance of the micronutrients to the macronutrients. But what have we done in the last 100 years, 200 years, 300 years, is we've systematically and scientifically figured out how to divorce the two. So we get lots of the macronutrients without the micronutrients. This is the stupidest thing human beings have done in their, you know, whatever, 2 million years or 500,000 years, whatever, however you want to divide that we've been on the planet. I'm Pharmacist Ben. All right. Okay, we are back on the bright side. Got lots of lines open for you. If we don't get calls, we'll get to, uh, I got a bunch of letters here I want to get to finish up with Glenn. Uh, so did that make sense, the micronutrient, macronutrient distinction, Glenn? How whole foods, whole foods, I don't think I finished my thought. Whole foods are a balance of both. Technology and, and food processing technology, I should say, has uh, become very skilled at separating those two to our ultimate health detriment. So what were you, did you have a question, Glenn? Um, uh, well, yeah, I was going to say, like, since you, since you mentioned that, um, what do you think of certain supplements like uh, blue-green freshwater algae, like spirulina? Love it. Or Love deer spirulina. Deer, deer, deer oh, velvet. What was, uh, deer antler velvet is not in the same category. I think of algae right. more as a food. Deer antler, deer oh, no, it's antler, not an algae. No, no, no. I'm just saying it's super, supposed to be a super nutrient. You know? it's, yeah, see, but here's the distinction. Algae is a food. I look at it as a right. food. Deer right, right. antler velvet is more of a supplement, an herbal supplement, and it does have some. Okay. It, it, theoretically, it's got the male hormones in there. I'm not convinced yeah, that that's. I don't. You know, have not, you used I'm it? Not convinced. No, no, no. I, I hear all the commercials for the various brands on the talk radio that talk about it. I, anything that does uh, affect directly affects endocrine function, I'm a little leery of. But the spirulina, that, that's, that's just the whole food. That's, that's a whole a food. Complete food, yeah. Whole, that's very complete good. food. Complete food. Yeah. Spirulina algae, these things that live on top of the ocean, not only are they complete foods, but they have this amazing ability to process the sun because they live on the surface of the ocean. And this incredible sun processing property can be exploited by the animals that eat it, like us. And when we eat those algaes, we get sun protection. And it's not just sun protection, we get electrical protection. Inside the body, we get electrical protection from algaes. Not to mention the fact that they're absolutely packed, loaded with electrical nutrients, minerals from the ocean. And they're in this suspended form. I wrote a blog post on gels here a couple of days ago. I tried to make gels interesting in, in cosmetics.
cosmetic chemistry, gels are, are really, they're very functional. And in the body, they're very functional too. And one of the neat things about algaes and planktons is they are jelly. They have this ability to, to, to lock water 